Sounds like it. Hey, uh, good morning. Welcome to the Tacker or VNF Lifecycle Management um, presentation. And we'll talk about what we mean by that actually later on. And then here's the uh, speakers. To introduce yourself. All right, uh, I'm Sridhar Ramaswamy. Uh, I'm a principal engineer in uh, Brocade's uh, software networking BU. Uh, I'm Isaki Yamahata uh, So far, I've been working on uh, I've working on Neutron for several years. And I'm Stephen Wong. I don't even work for an open stack company. <laughs> oh, there you go. I have a remote thing here, so might as well use it. Which now doesn't work. <laughs> Technical difficulties. So uh, this is the agenda. We will first go into the general background. We will talk about the tackle architecture as well as the workflow. We'll talk about how we implement certain things within, uh, uh, without, with Tacker in terms of the use case of VNF management. Uh, and then we would end it up with a demo and some sort of future roadmap. So I'm sure many people have seen this before. This is basically the NFV uh, diagrams. In our particular case, we're actually, we're actually concerned about the management in orchestration, which commonly known as the manual. And for particularly for Tacker, we're looking at the VNF managers. So we sort of hijacked that from the manual spec, but kind of summarized it. So there's a list of maybe about 15 different things that a VNF manager is supposed to do. Um, most importantly, it's actually doing VNF instantiation and terminations which means if you are doing spinning off VMs or, or containers or something, that you have to also monitor the health and performance um, of, the, uh, of the VNF. And the results of those monitoring would either you scale up or down the, the VNF or you self-healing if it actually doesn't meet some health indicators. Um, VNF managers particularly is something that is very blur defined in, in, in Manal, because one thing is it actually has interfaces to the vendor-specific element management inside. So it's actually always been penciled in as something that is actually vendor-specific. Um, we, VNF managers also does patches and updates on images. And um, what it does is, for one single VNF instance, it may actually have multiple VNF uh, components, and it should be able to actually manage that as a single VNF. So those are the roads. Um, so commonly, as more commonly implemented today, VNF managers uh, is bundled as part of a vendor-specific component in a VNF package. Um, there's a lot of pros on that. The, the biggest one is the fact that there has to be some way for VNF managers to talk to a vendor-specific VNF element management system. And, but then, if you really think about it, since we're actually doing lifecycle management, there are also a lot of cons that comes with that. One of this is because it's not part of the CMS, uh, the, not part of the cloud management system. It's not doing any resource management, really, because that's actually on the virtual side. Um, if you are doing it for vendor-specific things, you are still have to call the VIM interfaces. So for each different cloud management systems, you would have to have separate integrations for even a vendor-specific VNF manager package. And because it's not part of something that you actually authenticate by, say, Keystone on OpenStack, uh, it's not really a tenant authenticator. It's no tenancy awareness. Uh, and because of that, and the fact that service orchestration is actually talking directly into VIM, uh, anytime you have those resource or tenancy requirements, uh, Mano actually push all of that into the upper layer, the service orchestration layer, to actually do. Um, at the end of the day, actually, the manual spec specified that the VNF managers can actually manage multiple VNFs. Although in this case, they may actually say that this, is, this means to be a single vendor can manage multiple VNFs for their own vendor, but it's actually not ideal. So what we're actually now proposing is we think it's great to build a general purpose VNF manager, and we want to actually build it on OpenStack. But why, why have a general purpose VMF manager? So we quote directly from the manual spec, 5.4.2, that most of the VNF manager functions are assumed to be generic functions, applicable to any type of VNFs. So for an open source developers, when you heard about this, the first thing you're thinking, it's probably good to write an open source general purpose VNF manager. Um, and then what about pieces that are actually non-generic, that are vendor specific? 
Well, geez, let me think. OpenStack actually has, has OpenStack ever has that problem? Of course it does. It has a very well-known framework, which are plugins and drivers in some cases, to actually address vendor-specific components that can actually go into a generic piece of framework. So in, and also, actually, given that OpenStack is being viewed as the most common in the future, probably not now, um, VNF orchestration, VIM components for NFE deployments, the, if you have a v, OpenStack VNF managers, and actually even the rest of, some of the rest of the manual components, you should be able to use it as a quick reference to verify the specs, to see actually they're correct. Um, given that it's part of, if VNF manager is actually part of OpenStack, then your installation and deployment is pretty much the same. You can be authenticated by Keystone, you are, you're using fuel or some other things to actually bring up OpenStack, and then, and then, and then VNF manager is basically just another API endpoint. And Actually, as of today, there's already a lot of OpenStack projects that are filling up the VNF manager functional needs. And, we can, and, and building it on top of OpenStack, we can actually leverage all of those projects directly. And for that, we build Tacker, which is a new OpenStack service that would address the VNF manager use cases and the, the important part of the talk. This is the architecture of Tacker right now. Uh, as you can see, we actually build a catalog, but, um, which is actually not officially part of VNF uh, Manager. But for an end-to-end -end solutions, we actually just put it in as a way to actually show you that we can do this. Uh, Tacker is actually the green box over there, which is an a, a new API endpoint server. Uh, it's the components, as much as possible, is being used as more of a driver or plug-in architecture. So for things like managing the VIMs, uh, currently we're using Heat. But then you can see that you can actually plug in any drivers there. You can directly use Nova plugins for, co for, for compute or some other Kubernetes or things actually moving forward. Uh, and, and then for configuration push, we have management drivers. And then for monitoring, which we think that it's going to be very vendor specific moving forward, we also have drivers that actually manage this. And for this, we can jump into a workflow and we can go to Shrita. Uh, hi, folks. Thanks, Stephen. Um, so as you can see, I know some of you guys probably seen the NFE-related uh, talks where it's mostly around architecture and scenarios and use case. Here is an incarnation where you can actually, things are running, you can try some of those concepts out using an OpenStack project. So again, like Stephen mentioned, it's a Tacker is uh, another Stackforge project in OpenStack similar to Neutron or Nova or any other project, right? So I'm going to walk you through the Tacker service workflow, how you would actually use uh, for the VNF manager purpose. Right? Um, so as you see, uh, Tacker, uh, as like any other OpenStack project, it has a GUI, it has CLI, and of course, uh, all these two interfaces are driven out of API. And uh, the CLI or AI API is probably consumed uh, by an outbound uh, uh, interface like a NFEO or a OSS BSS of an ASP. Um, so I'm going to briefly walk you through how, how, how an SP might potentially use VNF Manager. So one of the things uh, they would probably start with, they want to build out the catalog of VNFs. Again, our premise here, like Stephen mentioned, is this is a general purpose VNF Manager. It's not tied to one vendor, right? So you can use this to actually host all of your VNFs from different vendors, right? So probably that's the first step, right? So there you go. So, so you would basically onboard all your VNFs. Uh, we will go into detail about some of the, the actual constructs that we would use to do that. But that's a rough flow. You will build out, you maybe perhaps your VNFs are uh, virtual routers or virtual firewall, or perhaps a virtual uh, uh, EPC or a virtual IMS server. You would actually build out these uh, VNF definitions. Again, they are like, they will spec out the actual VMs that's kind of backing that VNF, but that's sort of the first step. So once you have a catalog of VNF definitions, again, we are, we are using proper MANO terminology here. It's a VNF uh, descriptor. That's what VNFD stands for. So the next thing is now you're ready to launch or instantiate a VNF. So again, Tacker provides API to actually stand up a VNF. Uh, again, in this case, the default, uh, we are currently using EAT. 
Uh, and we, and again, through E, we want to leverage as many OpenStack components as possible. Uh, we don't want to redo any of the stuff that's already there. So again, we will see that theme all along in this uh, in this project. So, so again, eat and in turn uh, will launch the VM uh, or the VMs backing the VNF. Uh, <clears throat> again, so now the VM is up. We don't want to stop there, right? Now, now some flavors of the spec calls out, okay, that's the end of VNF manager role. So we want to make it make the solution a little further and complete. So TACA provides a, a driver mechanism where you can actually inject the initial config. It facilitates uh, not just launching the VNF, but actually instantiating the services that's been called out on the VNF. Uh, again, we'll go to some more detail in later slides. Uh, OK, now the VNF is up, providing the service. Uh, but TACA also as a capability to monitor, right? Now, again, this is one of the main things, again, uh, Mano calls out. Uh, given things are, again, the old NFE trend is you're actually virtualizing a network function that was running in hardware with five nines. When you virtualize, you need to bring the same IA availability, uh, the, re the reliability uh, to the NFE solution. Again, Tacker provides a way to monitor the VNFs. And for example, if, say, a VNF uh, as an issue, uh, maybe it went down, uh, it can automatically respawn. It can detect that situation and respawn. So there are more, few other scenarios we will get into it, but this is the overall flow, right? Uh, starting from uh, building out your catalog of VNFs, standing up using, again, Tacker APIs, and Tacker maintaining and sort of babysitting your VNF sort of uh, to make it uh, performant, stay alive, be performant, and provide the service that you ask for. Um, OK, now uh, I'll go into some of the specific details on how Tacker does some of these things. So catalog. I know uh, <clears throat> there are different solutions that used uh, EAT directly, right? But something that's missing in EAT, for example, is you can only instantiate a stack, right? There is no way you can actually maintain a catalog of EAT templates. So this is one case where Tacker provides a capability. Again, the focus is specific. Uh, it's not a general purpose application catalog. It's focused for VNFs and NFE use cases. Uh, so we are using Tosca templates. Tosca stands for uh, topology and orchestration spec for cloud application. It's fairly well known uh, in the NFE world as a sort of the de facto standard spec code of VNF. We are using a simplified version of it. So uh, you can actually spec out your VM, VNF, and in fact, uh, the VNF could actually have multiple VMs. So you might have a control plane VM and one or more data plane VMs. You can actually spec code all together in one template, and uh, so it gets stored in the uh, Tacker API, I mean, through Tacker API in a Tacker database. Um, so this is how we constitute a, a, a VNF catalog. So what does it, what, uh, what goes into these definitions, right? So essentially you describe your VNF <coughs> In, with all its ingredients. Uh, of course, you need the glance image, right, backing the VM. Uh, you can describe all the NOVA properties of that VM, right, how you want to land uh, that VM, right, the placement policies. Uh, what can I, is there any custom uh, performance related knobs that you want to tune in NOVA, like a CPU pinning or NUMA or any other metrics, right? You might want to land uh, this VNF with a node that's having a SRIUV card, perhaps, right? Those are the, some of the stuff. And the uh, and rest of the, the three are something that Tacker brings in, right? You can actually spec out uh, what kind of self-healing policy that uh, you want to describe. So there are times if a VNF goes down, you may just want to raise an alarm for an operator to, uh, to come and uh, do something about it. Uh, or there could be a case where you, can, you want to automatically heal, right? Uh, rectify the scenario, right? So that's a uh, policy you can spec out. Uh, you can scale the VNF, right? Depending on some thresholds, uh, you can specify how you want to scale it. Or you can even want to uh, emit an event telling, hey, this VNF is not being performant. Right? Uh, so, and performance monitoring kind of feeds into both scaling and auto healing. So, so you can actually spec out all those in your template. Uh, so, okay, now the template is ready in the Tacker database. Uh, you can ta have Tacker API to actually instantiate. Uh, like Stephen mentioned, we want to make this as a flexible framework. 
for the folks uh, who know about Neutron and other Nova and other products, we know one mechanism doesn't fit, right? So that's why many of these are pluggable. Like current driver of choice is EAT. So you could, like Stephen mentioned, it could be other drivers. Here, uh, the EAT driver uh, automatically on the fly converts the Tosca template to EAT and instantiate uh, the VMs, maybe one or more, uh, on a NOVA and the Neutron, right? And of course, terminating a VNF means bringing down all the, all the VMs that's backing that VNF. So it's a basic, nothing fancy, but yeah, the catch is, uh, I want to write, right, we are following a, a sort of a NFE standard templating models and the right components of OpenStack to do it. Uh, so, so now the VNF is up and running. Like, like I mentioned, we want to facilitate the configuration. We want the VNF to be uh, providing the service that it, it's actually selected for, right? Because at the end of the day, that's the goal, right? The services being offered out of that VNF is the end goal. So we facilitate in injecting initial configuration. It could be through config drive, or <clears throat> you might even have custom management driver, right? Uh, so again, this is sort of a touchy point in Mano where it calls out EMS. There is a separate EMS functionality, uh, which is fine, right? This is optional. Uh, here we are taking a view where you could potentially use Stacker end-to-end, -end, or you might actually make this a, this could be a trigger to your EMS to go and configure the VNF. That's perfectly fine, right? Uh, again, this provides enough uh, uh, frameworks to, to take care of all the scenarios. And in fact, Tacker can also, uh, during the, when the VNF is up and running and forwarding a service, there is also a mechanism to actually change the configuration to provide new service. So maybe a virtual router can be a multi-service router. It's providing NAT and firewall. You might choose to do VPN, uh, perhaps down the line. You can just, on the same VNF, you can actually update the config. All done using the same management driver framework. Extendable. So that's the, the key aspect of this. Uh, so in general, the, the next couple of slides talks about uh, <coughs> We are going to make sure not just uh, let the VM up initial config. We are going to sort of babysit to make sure it's doing what it's supposed to do. That's sort of the theme. Uh, so there are basic things that we already support, for a, like uh, simple network connectivity check. right? Uh, and there are policies that you would have described in the VPN uh, VNF definition. Hey, if there is a network connectivity failure, what should I do? So one of the policy could be to automatically respawn, right? So there is a minimal disruption to the service. There could be another trigger where it automatically switches to a standby. So there are, the way you handle a scenario could be configured in the policy. Uh, so in this case, in fact, you would see in the demo down, uh, further down, some of these things actually happening. Again, the next aspect, okay, so you made sure the, v, uh, the VNF is up, it's actually live. If things go bad, we will fix it. But there are cases where it might be non-performant, right? So again, we have mechanisms to actually, uh, perhaps using uh, EAT, we can trigger uh, some of these events, uh, basically monitor for some of the events. Again, we will probably use Celometer to, to do this and auto-scale the VNF. Perhaps we can <coughs> send new uh, stack, stack update commands to increase the CPU and memory and hope if the VNF can uh, absorb these dynamic uh, changes to the infra, it would actually, it can scale up. Or we can actually have new VM spawned uh, in the auto scale group. So we could basically use that to uh, auto scale. Again, this can be, this is extendable, right? Uh, you can choose to have your own auto scale drivers to do what you want to do for your VNF. Again, that's the thing. Uh, this is something we anticipate uh, Tacker should should not prescribe everything, right? It it can come up with some default ways of doing things, but this is something you should be able to enhance as you need. So uh, so we're going to see a demo. That the key takeaway, uh, one thing I want to rate rate is this is a service that's actually up and running that you can actually install in your OpenStack and try it out. So the way this would work, I would uh, invite Isako. Thank you, Shreya. Uh, let me show a demo video. So, okay. 
So um, in this video, uh, I'd like, we'd like to show uh, how Taka works and uh, how uh, workflow scenario works. Okay. Okay. Come on. It's okay. So now uh, this is uh, uh, this is uh, our own. Uh, uh, this is uh, uh, integrated uh, GUI. Uh, GUI is integrated into uh, Horizon, so we can we can use seamlessly. Uh, this our fun Taka functionality, and now here uh, we can see uh, its own uh, pane here, pane here, and uh, pane here, and here is uh, a VNF catalog, and uh, VNF catalog, and now uh, we have already uh, registered some uh, catalogs, and there is uh, also, uh, and here is. Uh, oh, it's already moving. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, here is a VNF uh, VNF list. Uh, we can see uh, already instantiated instantiated uh, VNF, and we can see here uh, what what uh, services are instantiate, instantiated, and we can see uh, here uh, its status. And now uh, we can let's on board let's on board a new uh, VNF D. Here, uh, here is uh, the new uh, VNF, uh, VNF descriptor. Uh, we can uh, we now uh, here uh, we use OpenFort as a, a service, and we can see uh, it's uh, it's supported a uh, service and firewall, and its image is uh, actually OpenFort. And now we can onboard uh, its. Uh, definitions. Uh, let's input uh, its name and let's choose its actual file name uh, here and let's onboard. Now we can see uh, our new <coughs> new definition is listed here and uh, its uh, new so its supported uh, service. Which, uh, we can see its supported service uh, here. And this is a UUID. And that now uh, let's ins instantiate its. Uh, let now uh, let's instantiate uh, its open world service. And input, input its name and choose uh, our. Uh, uh, now we restart uh, restart VNF D. And now it's in let's instantiate it. Now we can see its uh, background. It triggers. Uh, it sends a request to OpenStack Heat, and its actual deployment is ongoing. And we can see uh, its the status in its uh, its uh, deployment is ongoing here. And actually, at this point, uh, its service is not ready yet, so we don't see uh, we don't see service in this column yet. And uh, and now we can await its deployment. And come come come. So on the on the and background, it is actually instantiating uh, all the VMs that's described in the yes. uh, template. Uh, now, uh, actual uh, services uh, instantiated and uh, actual co configuration is automat automatically in injected into uh, Open World. And now uh, we can see its service is ready. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, background actually hit is triggered and uh, uh, actual Open World VM is. Uh, uh, is created, so we can see it's a uh, it's a it's VM on instance uh, instance list here, and we can see actually open world VM is created here, and we can actually access into its console, and uh, we can see access its console, and we can see actual open world console and console. Mm -hmm. And uh, now uh, you, you can see uh, Open World Console and the initial uh, control. And we can uh, actually uh, Open World configuration is under etc config directory. So actually we can uh, check its initial configuration under here, looking at file. And this is uh, just a uh, uh, minimal configuration for demo. And also we can uh, actually put into the uh, new configuration in here. Let's check. Uh, let's check its new configuration. 
Actually, this is a new configuration. Actually, uh, its configuration, BNF configuration is uh, depend, dependent on uh, BNF. So this is this configuration file is uh, BNF uh, open world specific, and we can put into the uh, we can push this configuration into open world. And actually, uh, now a new configuration is pushed into the open world, and uh, actually new new firewall services already uh, changed to a new configuration. And we can check uh, actually we can check uh, by looking at uh, configuration file. And now we can see a new configuration file is uh, pushed into the open world. Uh, so then uh, next uh, big feature is uh, auto uh, health health monitoring and uh, auto self-healing. Now uh, we can uh, simulate uh, network uh, disconnection by, set, uh, by setting its network interface down. So uh, let's, uh, now uh, we can, uh, now uh, let's uh, down, let's set network interface down. So now this VM is uh, unreachable from network. So. Uh, Taka is uh, constantly uh, health monitoring its uh, connectivity. Uh, the reason why I constantly reload is sometimes we miss the uh, uh, status change from uh, active to uh, unhealthy to active. So uh, I'd like to show the uh, status change. Uh, so uh, I, constant, I constantly uh, upload it, uh, this, this uh, screen. But usually you don't have to uh, reload many times. So uh, actually, uh, it uh, takes care. It detects its uh, network unreachability. So uh, it uh, it detects uh, its unhealthiness. So backgroundly, it backgroundly it uh, checks network connectivity and it try to kick new new instance. It try to instantiate new service, a new instance, and uh, and then and try to kill old one. And uh, now. Uh, it's this uh, uh, health healing activities are uh, occurring uh, backgroundly. And it takes a while to bring up new service file. Now, uh, now uh, new services bring up. And we can check, we can see uh, the old, old open world console. Now, uh, it's, it is already uh, killed. And the new instance is running, so old one, old Open world console is not accessible, and uh, let's see a uh, new instance is running on instance pane, and we can see here and the new uh, open world con open world instance is running here, and we can access its console and we can check uh, its firewall configuration here, and we can see. Uh, uh, new configuration is actually uh, same, uh, already updated one here. Okay. Okay, uh, that's it. Uh, now uh, I showed uh, how uh, Taka works, uh, how it works uh, according to workflow. Uh, let's. So as the demo demonstrated, uh, we um, did most of the things that we actually promised in the beginning. But there's actually still things in the future that we actually want to tackle. Um, XA is obviously a very big deal for any telco who wants to deploy things. Um, and resource pooling, according to Mantle Specs, was supposed to be part of the service orchestration. But now that the VNF manager is actually part of, the, part of OpenStack, you could actually do resource pool by, by VNF manager on, on Tacker. Uh, upgrade and patch management is actually not implemented yet, and then we would welcome any community members to actually come in and help out. And then we may actually explore using Morano for VNF catalog moving forward. So for anyone who is actually interested in this project, please get involved. Uh, our code is on Stackforge, so those are the URL. Um, you can download them. It works exactly the way you would think in the demo. Uh, we have a weekly ILC meeting on OpenStack meeting four, the channel, at uh, 1700 UTC. Probably not next Wednesday, but the Wednesday after. Yeah. And then we have an IOC channel on Tacker, Pound Tacker, and a wiki page on uh, there too. So 
Thank you. Any questions? So your network monitoring, um, well, I guess two questions. The network monitoring assumes network connectivity between the attacker server, wherever that's running, and the individual VMs? Is that no. true? Okay, well, okay let, me, let me preface that. Um, health monitoring, are you assuming to run at the VM level, or are you going to run at the, or application level or it's configurable so that I could, for example, put in a policy, or excuse, excuse me, a plugin that would let me do. Yeah, so monitor, the monitor is a driver. You can actually plug it in. Okay. Uh, the one that we're showing you in a demo is, is assuming that's connectivity between the attacker API server and the VM itself. Okay, so, but that's yeah, to, I could disable that so that, I mean, if I know yeah, yeah, there's no yeah, connectivity it's just a driver. between. Yes, that's right. Okay. Mm -hmm. it's, not a de it's not a default. It doesn't, it, it runs by default, but then you can always plug in a different driver. Okay. Different monitoring driver. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. uh, could you go to the mic? Hi, pretty cool stuff. Um, I had one question. So when you um, have this uh, VNF-specific monitoring drivers and management drivers, is it a challenge for you to figure out, um, say, appropriate abstraction levels so that the attacker can actually uh, do something with the information? So, for example, um, say you, you are monitoring health. I mean, that, that may be uh, monitored in different ways and different applications or VNFs. So what is your way to abstract? Right. Uh, I can take that. So uh, totally right. I mean, there are, Tacker itself has a view of uh, the VIM, right? It can detect the anything, anything around monitoring around that. But we can also go inside the VNF uh, it's totally uh, possible to have an uh, agent running in the VNF talking to Tacker, feeding the health of the servers running within the VNF. Uh, so that's uh, something that, that the agent can t talk to uh, the Tacker, and Tacker can trigger whatever uh, way it can alleviate that scenario. Mm -hmm. right? that's, that's perfectly possible. That's one reason you can extend the monitoring driver to satisfy the need of a specific VNF behavior. Mm -hmm. So th that's, that's one reason, uh, that's one thing we factored in, in the design. Nice, thank you. Um, when uh, you restart the VM, um, when the old instance is uh, um, not, react, react, um, not reachable and then you re started new VM, so how do you make sure that the traffic is going through the new VM? Uh, do you trigger something to not bound? Uh, whoever is doing survey chaining, uh, giving the instance a new uh, address, IP address or MAC address? Uh, so in this case, uh, uh, it's, it's basically, there will be a service disruption in this model, right? Uh, but uh, it's basically, uh, the, there is no, uh, until you have an active standby scenario, uh, the rest of the uh, flows need to kind of, need to restart, right? So the, this, the network ports, the neutron ports would come back with, uh, with the same IP address and uh, the service will continue from there on. Right? There's no service chaining yet. I mean, we are, not, we are intentionally <coughs> staying out of that because that is still being baked in different forums. Uh, but you're right, that, so uh, down the line, we do anticipate we could uh, have a sort of a service chaining capability to be spec'd out for all the VNF. Mm -hmm. In fact, essentially, one of the roadmap item we <laughs> had was okay. the uh, FFG, the fo uh, function forwarding graph. But uh, currently, yeah, we, we don't have that support yet. Yeah, so in this case, on the demo, we show you a disruptive things because, well, by default, we, we have no VNFD describing that if you, if you lose kind of network connectivities, you bring down the VM and then bring up a new one. You could conceivably describe a different policy, but then someone would have to actually write the framework to make sure that it, it would still work in terms of traffic flow. So that's new API that, that we welcome anyone to come in and actually contribute to that. Yeah, uh, especially if application is not uh, uh, responding. Uh, okay, VM is up, but mm -hmm. my application is not responding. So yeah. I want to uh, create a new up VM and then yeah. start application there. Yeah, one would imagine so there will be a different address, monitoring. Yeah. yeah, you cannot have the same IP address on the new VM. So somebody needs to steer the traffic to the new mm -hmm. instance. Yep. Yeah. yeah, so those yeah. are policy based, and then, then, then we'll have to implement how to actually handle that policy. Yeah. Okay, e excellent presentation. Uh, just um, one question you had. So my VNF can have two processes, actually. Uh, that's, it is possible, and it can run on two different VMs. Mm -hmm. So do I need to change the, uh, the VNF descriptor to 
elaborate to articulate that, or would your attacker take care of that anyway? It would have to be described in it, the it, it has to be described. Yeah. But, right. how, but it's, I, can I make groups of VMs as one VNF? Is it possible? Totally, totally. Yeah. So in fact, uh, the way nanospecs we are following that as is, uh, one VNF will have different VDUs, virtual deployment units mm -hmm. that maps to one VM. So you can have VDU1, VDU2, VDU3. And that all VNF is, uh, is handled in one way, one shot, right? When you instantiate, say, if there are three VDUs, all three VDUs, VDUs will be instantiated. And of course, when you terminate, all three will go down. In fact, if you see the, I don't know whether you caught in the demo, uh, the VNF, when, when things go, so when there's a reason to respawn, the VNF definition, the VNF UID all stays the same. It's just the VMs backing that VM, uh, VNF, will get restarted. So, so any policy you would have written or any other thing that you have written against VNF stays the same. So okay. that's and, and one final question. Uh, so you use Tosca. So how did you translate from a, a specification to, uh, to whatever you are doing? So did you use some kind of a parser? or? So we wrote a simple parser uh, to, that actually translates on the fly to eat. Mm -hmm. uh, again, we have intentionally kept the Tosca templating simple. I know the Tosca spec is it's a fairly, it's all encompassing. Yeah. Uh, in fact, uh, we have plans to even see, there's actually EAT as a effort, translator, yeah. right? That's actually working in, within the, that's being, uh, just showed up uh, recently. Yeah, the, that's a demo actually recently, just yesterday or two days ago. Yes, I think. so we might actually st start using yeah. that down the line. Right. So For now, we have a simple uh, translator so parser the, in our own yeah. project. The heat uh, this parser is open source, so it is part yeah, of the yeah. So one. even the heat one is open source. Ours is obviously open source in Tacker uh, code base. But then, but then there's also an effort on the heat project that actually has a direct task or the heat translator. And that's, uh, they demoed that yesterday. Uh, I think they checked it in, or maybe they haven't. No, so uh, they, yeah, they there's a, that. yeah, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. So I have a question on the HA functionality you want to implement. I mean, this is future roadmap, so maybe you cannot answer the question now. But the, the HA is a, I mean, HA is a very wide scope. What you do here yeah. is like HA on a service layer, so from a management perspective. Um, but there's also HA, for example, on the infrastructure layer. And both HA functionalities may do some action to resolve some issue. Um, any ideas how to coordinate this uh, so that you don't have conflicts here? Configuration issues. Right, so, so uh, if I understand the question, um, so you want, you're get, gonna want to understand how we think we would potentially approach the HA down the line. Uh, right, so there are, cases where your VIM itself could tell you a lot about your VNF, right? Uh, your VM could uh, end up in an error state, right? So that could be one reason to, say, spawn out of the VM. Uh, again, we kind of explicitly show something drastic here by taking down a network interface, but there could be other triggers to do HA, like to respawn. But I believe you're also exploring, I don't know whether your intention is to look sort of a, a active standby Scenario is, is for a VNF. I mean, if we if we spend a VM, we we spin two VMs and one of them is actively out on standby. I mean, like there are different ways how to do HA, mm -hmm. and also, I mean, you are acting on on the mano layer, and my question is more like, there are also other HA functionalities, maybe on more on the infrastructure side, which you not are aware of. Yeah. So both of them may do some decisions to resolve the issue. Yeah or to provide oh, so the HA. So how can you coordinate well, among HA or some other Right. Uh, I, I don't think we have dealt too much in those areas yet. Mm -hmm. uh, but we are also taking uh, something specific to the NFV. Like, for example, uh, V routers typically have their own protocol, uh, like VRRP, uh, to basically do active standby. Uh, again, you can launch a V router, VNF, as act two VMs, one active standby. Uh, but this something need to be reconciled. I mean, I totally understand. Like, mm -hmm. you can have two HA at different layers. Uh, that's something uh, when you spec out your VNF. That's something you need to decide. What kind of HA are you going to let the uh, the HA of the VNF take care? Right, Tacker stand back. Yeah. That's perfectly fine. No, and another thing right. is, as we said, Tacker is leveraging the existing infrastructure. So if Nova has an HA story. We'll actually use the Nova actually story. We're not we're not creating a a, a tacker management of Nova actually. We we'll actually let actually a, a Nova to actually take care of that as much as possible. Right. Okay. So Thank so uh, one VNF uh, VM can actually talk. If you have some agent 
you, if you have designed an agent to talk to Tacker, Tacker can react and spawn or like give some instruction to the standby, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but something that's something you need to decide when you define your VNF. Sorry, please stating the same. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Hand waving a bit because we're not. We haven't yeah. actually decided how to do it. Again, yet. Uh, we <laughs> welcome any feedback. Yeah. Uh, community involvement for sure. Right. <laughs> uh, Rakesh from Comcast. Yep. Really good work. Thank you. This is Thank something you. we needed. I mean, I think we had the Telefonica manual, but this is a much uh, beyond what they had done before. So if you can think about maybe in the next iteration also add service chaining. I think OpenStack has started some work on the intent thing that uh, to tie the controllers in the, in the bottom. But good work. Sure. Thank you. Yeah, uh, thank you. Interestingly, we have the person who worked in uh, Neutron BGP. So yeah, it's a good base policy. Yeah. Which is, uh, well, but then they're talking about the intent base, which right, is actually right. what the new one is. The, the related one. Yeah. yeah, service chaining, we'd love to bring it in. But again, we don't want to too, uh, take too much in our few iterations. In fact, uh, uh, this is something we we brought bringing out for the set of the first time. Uh, yeah, t totally. Thanks for the feedback. Yes. So a uh, question about the connection from the track attacker to the VM. So how attacker select the IP of the VM to connect for the service configuration or monitoring? Because one VM can have several IPs, floating IP or one, one or more tenant IPs. Yeah, so at this point, we're using the provider net on, of Nova. So it's more like you can think of that as like a management IP that hooks directly up to the VM. This is actually what we monitor at this point. Um, the actual data IP that the, for, for VM neutron port that hooks up to a neutron network, yeah. that thing we're not monitoring at this point. Right, so but, but, uh -huh. uh, but we do have a capability when you do a VNF create, which is the API to launch a VNF. Uh, obviously, the template is there. Uh, we also take a config YAML, config.yaml, where you can parameterize some of the IP, right? So you can potentially uh, parameterize the uh, IP addresses that goes in the, into each of the NICs, and you want to associate. That's something uh, we can facilitate through uh, Tacker. Uh, so which, obviously, right, you, when you instantiate VNF, you want to uh, customize for that instantiation. Mm -hmm. All those things can be parameterized, yeah. Yeah, and uh, another question about the credential, how you manage the credential to log into the VM to inject this service configuration? Uh, at this point, uh, uh, at, uh, for them, uh, the credential is written in a configuration file, but it's quite up to uh, management driver, so you can write your own uh, credential way. Writing by your management driver. Yeah, one, one would imagine it would be like from element management, we, we have some sort of uh, 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 auto authentications between the two, and then they get the credentials that way. So, so the, the, the interface between the attacker um, uh, interface, which interface is that to, to EM? Actually, we haven't even had an EM. Well, actually, it's one of the plugins. Right. So, one of the management driver plugins. We actually haven't had an authentication control plane plugin yet. Right, so, so, so if there is actually an argument called config.yaml that you mm -hmm. can pass to VNF create. Yeah. You, would, you, would, you need to build that out, and we anticipate you might have some IPAM in your network where you would grab the IP address for this instantiation, and you might even uh, call out the, the default config, like the username password. So those are the stuff you, you need to parameterize, and we, that's something we, we want the northbound to give us, right? Mm -hmm. That's something beyond the scope of a the, 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 the yeah. boundary that we are defining. Logging, logging into a VNF and change configuration is really a VNF specific thing. So we, we do anticipate that it has to be some sort of drivers to right. make that happen. Okay, thank you. Uh -huh. Thank you. Okay. Uh, lunch time, guys. So. All right. <laughs> thank you.